Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog. So we've got another box on the bench today. I'm gonna take a uh, take a peek inside this. Um, of course I already know what this is, but um, I'm gonna say I still I'm loving this. Uh, I'm loving this whole box thing. Uh, the last few have been in boxes, and I am. And I am, uh, I am enjoying that now. Okay, so this is just taking me back um, a little bit because I expected, well, I expected a kit, and we don't have a kit. What we have is a fully made up two channels, left and right, or right and left, however it is you want to look at that. And um, I'm just looking for the annoying things sometimes when you can see them, whether it be the uh, transistors or all wonky or something, but they all seem to be pretty good. So yeah, so obviously I've ordered this uh, this this pre-made kit. Oh, look at the look. It's still got the legs sticking out of here. Um, is that the same on the other one? Yeah, they're sticking out. Don't know why they've left that like that, but never mind. And um, yeah, but it all looks to be okay. I don't know if the resistors are, you know, put on there so you can read them left to right the way I would normally do it, but that's just me being weird. And um, but everything looks, everything looks pretty good. It's nice and clean on the bottom. It's always nice to see. Probably do it with another little bit of clean off, but no, that's that's all good. Uh, we got Nichicon caps, according to this, and uh, there's no AC um, transfer, you know, conversion to DC on this. this is a straight. We got a minus 35 volts DC there. It says. Positive 35 volt DC there. Speaker out. I'm going to have one terminal somewhere for ground. And there it is. So yeah, I'll be sharing the ground with your speakers and and the um, and the power supply. Okay, yeah. So they, they look okay. Let's have a little look then at the, uh, at the screen and see what we've actually got here. So this is, um, obviously I've made a just made a mistake here the kit I bought the the, the pre-built jobby uh, the finished board and uh, looks like our inductors have been put on a different way around got the, look inside for the if you can see inside there there's resistors in there um, but yeah so that looks to be the only difference uh, that stands out. So look what we got here. We got two channel SYM5 SYM5-3. Now this isn't the same as the other one I showed. The other one I showed was two channels built onto one board. And I think that's a very good amplifier. That's the one that I have in my bedroom and I've paired it up with uh, let me just go to here, a pair of these. I highlighted that AU $899, or $329 in this country. Pounds, $399. American, um, this is what I have in my bedroom on stands. And with the other Symer, uh, I find that to be a very, uh, yeah, very nice, very nice sounding, very nice, good, uh, uh, very good. So let's have a look, let's see what it says. It says the Sima, Sima Sim 5-3 power amplifier is a very well known circuit for the DIY audio forum. And again, I'll just reiterate, I've got this, but both of these, on the same board and so there are two different circuits in actual fact there's more than two different circuits for this 
And from here I can see this says 2040. 2016. Sorry. Um, and so we have a well-known circuit on the DIY forum. The number of clicks on this circuit's post is still very active. It has ultra-low distortion when fully loaded and the sound quality can be said to be very good. It has a power of 100 watts in 4 ohms per channel. That's all right, well, we'll look at that in a second. It is very suitable for home use, suitable for driving high power hi fi speakers above 6.5 inches. The circuit works in high partial class A and B without noise and current sound. The product is simple and the circuit is stable and reliable. Voltage feedback suitable for hi fi players to grinder. I'm not sure what they're saying there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite old, so there's going to be things of the younger talking uh, vernacular that I don't, uh, I don't, I've not been keeping up with. But I thought grinder was something else. But anyway, status class AB, output power, 200 watts into 2 ohms, 150 watts into 4 ohms. It did say over here that we got 100 watts into 4 ohms. Uh, 100 watts into 8 ohms, input voltage DC, plus minus 35 volt to plus minus 45 volt, Re recommended DC plus minus 40 volts. THD, not THD plus N, plus the noise, but THD 0 0.002, very respectable, at 1 kilohertz full power. 0 0.005, very respectable, um, 10 kilohertz full power. Power output transistors, blah, blah, drive tube to Shima. Yeah, okay. And um, just in case you want to know, there's uh, NJW0281 and it's complementary, the 0302. And the drive tube, the Toshiba 2SA1930 and the complementary 2SC5171. Okay, so the part boards and this is the imagery for your kit. Um, but as we can see with the board, everything's as it should be. So, okay, well, let's, um, th th this, we got a biasing thing going on here. Let me just tell you what the uh, debug is on that. That's what they call it. So I think, um, kit debugging instructions, set the multimeter to the DC millivolt position, measure two ends of any white ceramic resistor with the pen tips, adjust the blue 500R, adjustable resistor and use the white cement resistor with a voltage of 15 and use the white cement resistor with a voltage of 15 22 millivolts at both ends all right so if we look at we can see our cement resistors here we got one end there one end there so we could quite literally because that goes to the inductor so we could take it from the top of that inductor there and because we got one here it goes to this lead here um, we could connect here and to the uh, the part of the inductor in there and that will give us uh, the ability to tune that into between 15 and 22 millivolts um, yeah for reading of the, the voltage and use this uh, 500k, 500R, I believe, 500R multi-turn pot there to do that. And we'll check that just to ensure, because I don't know if they've done that or not. Be good if they have, because that means that the whole thing works. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Right, let's uh, let's get some tests on the go. Okay, right. So, um, so I've just been testing this, and what I did was I decided to go off and make myself a cheese sandwich. And this is after I'd run the tests and I was just letting things cool down. And um, while I was making the cheese sandwich,
Yeah, the weird noise my neighbour downstairs, she likes to seek attention where she can. So yes, while I'm making a cheese sandwich, and uh, one of these shot off, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, well, that's, you know, just popped off something. And then, uh, that's actually behind me, no, it's not here. Because this one came off here, it looks like. And this one, uh, with the bit missing, because it's still stuck here, came off there. And um, as we can see, it's well and truly sort of stuck. It's stuck to this. And I've got a funny feeling, because that's like slightly off it, I had to have the pressure on there for it to stay on there. Um, I checked on the power supplies because I could hear the fans running at full board and it was running at full current. So I presume, you know, they're damaged. But never mind. We did get some results anyway. So we'll look at the results that we got and I'll get around to repairing this at some stage. I'll have to get some of the transistors, even though the transistors themselves look a bit dodgy, to be honest with you. And I'll show you why I think that. That's uh, because they look like they got the, you know, they just don't look uh, very good. That square bit in there looks like it's like more polished up than around the outside of it. And mm, most transistors don't really look like that. Not unless they are dodgy. So possibly they're dodgy. What I was doing as well is... Um, on this mine, even though it was pre-built, uh, you have to turn it to turn it clockwise is to turn it down. And I was getting about 185 to 190 milliamps um, when it was about, probably about 17, 18 millivolts. And that's going from, like I said uh, before, but I'll just reiterate from this pin here, the third pin, and the top of the, uh, the top of the coil and you can take the measurement from there to get that uh, the way you want it so let's look at the results um, I'm just gonna put this across here first so this is a uh, THD noise as we can see uh, 0 0.08107 0 07. you got these little notchy bits here it could be you know what's on the benches uh, we've got a 0.17 there, that's an at 20 hertz, 0.2, and if we get rid of the noise, uh, total harmonic distortion, um, you know, down here, uh, 0 0.6, so it's over an order of magnitude different. Uh, they say at 1k it should be a 0 0.005, 0 0.002 even, and at 10k, 0 0.005, but as we can see. Uh, it's not really working out like that. Maybe with different transistors, this could be different. Frequency response looks pretty good. Uh, this is 20k here. Uh, so uh, 0 0.10. Hardly anything. Tenth of a dB. Uh, we're going to put a high point round about here. 0 0.12. So uh, minus a tenth of a dB there. Sort of a gain of a tenth of the dB here. Uh, I think we're at 20 about here. Yeah, that's 20. Um, so that's that's all pretty good as well. Um, we'll look at the spectrum analyzer. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you can see here where we haven't got it so great. We're at 0 0.6, um, 66, 0 0.6 dB down there on the second harmonic, which is the nicer harmonic. Third fourth fifth but the third it's all decreasing anyway uh, which is quite nice and it's the second harmonic that we've got there which, like I said that's the nicer harmonic that's not the one you hear a horrible distortion that's the one that gives a bit of color let's say or flavor if you like and on the scope unfortunately uh, this is at 50 kilohertz but of course I can't really show you through the scope anymore, but it didn't do too bad. Um, uh, 20 uh, hertz was about there. Uh, it didn't do too bad. Um, I'll have to do another one of these. 
uh, maybe I'll uh, chuck the other channel on actually and we'll give that a go just to go over this um, just to go over this on here all right so uh, I didn't get round to using the uh, the other power supply which I was going to buy on there so if you do a um, that's 300 VA and that should be enough power for one channel remember this is like class a b so it runs higher on the quiescent current uh, where you might have um, I can't remember what the uh, L12 runs at, but it's a lot lower. It's half, less than half the value of what this runs on quiescent current because it's a, an AB, so it's running slightly in A mode. Um, okay, right. Well, that's that for now.